In the winter, when we were traveling, we didn't build sod houses, we built snow houses. In Canada, they call them igloo, but here in Alaska, we call them apuya. We do a day of travel, and then we'd make an apuya. The next day, my father would set traps, spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat, and then the following day, we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at Dubai. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. We just visit with them, and my dad and his sister were glad to see each other, and they'd talk away while kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt or with my grandmother, and then he'd start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into 85 kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different kind. We're in ecological time. Drum is something that's common to all cultures in Alaska. All cultures have a drum that may have some stylistic differences or differences in the materials that's made, but it's still a recognition of life and vitality and the drum mirrors the heartbeat and when you continue drumming soon it will be in line with your heartbeat because that's what it's supposed to be the heartbeat of the community and it symbolizes vitality and it's it's the most tremendous feeling to be in a room and to have one long row of all the drummers and to have that feeling of unity, everyone beating in harmony, the drum beat in unison, it's the most beautiful feeling. And to know that you're connected, you're on the land that you are connected to. And even if you grew up outside of the community, that which is in you comes from this area. And it's, it's the greatest feeling. just like other people. They just happen to be very small and extremely strong. These are stories that are common throughout Alaska. And it's normally the people are you know, size from your elbow to the tips of your fingers, and they possess superhuman strength. So they may be tiny, but they can carry a whole caribou. And if you go up north and you talk to a number of the people in the community, they'll talk about having seen the little people. There's a place at home that we know, but we don't profess it to anybody. But it's not like the boogeyman. They can be mischievous, they can be ornery, or they can be helpers. And every now and then, we might have the opportunity to see them, especially if they want us to see them. The fact that it's across Alaska really tells you something about our history and how we interacted with nature around us. The bola is what we call kilometown. And the kilometown is made out of braided sinew tied out to some heavy bone which you could twirl. In my case, we're catching ducks. When we're out whaling, sometimes the ducks start flying. And they're good for duck hunting. You know, uh, if you're a whaling crew, you can't make too much noise, so you can't Use a shotgun for um, getting some duck soup handy, you know. So bolo was a really handy weapon to use for catching ducks. You know, the ducks fly in, you throw it up and tangles up the bird, and down they go. The scaredest I've ever been, 
I was 12 years old. We floated out on a piece of ice uh, while we were duck hunting. It was a bluebird day, just clear blue skies. And there was three of us, myself, my brother, and my dad. Next thing you know, we see this dark, dark shadow on the ice. Uh, we look and it goes behind us. So we, we all jumped up startled and uh, my dad, he started running. We got back to the ridge there. The, uh, the ice had fractured, cracked and broke off and we were floating away. We were, we were drifting. <laughs> It was close enough to where my dad would have made it. He stopped and he thought about throwing us across and if one of us was on the other side, we would be split up. So he stopped and he just so happened to have a, a cell phone on him. 911 didn't pick up. <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world right there. 911 did not pick up. So he left a, a message because they record their calls. Once he had relayed that information, his cell phone died. That was the scariest moment I've ever had in my life. We were floating away and I thought we were left for dead. Uh, he kept calm during this situation. Uh, he's bringing out everything positive in this case, you know. I'm crying, my brother's freaking out. It went from clear blue to dense, dense fog. Within a couple hours, we heard the chopper flying around, so they must have gotten our message. We thought we were saved, and then the chopper sound went away. So we lit some of the sled on fire. It's plastic. We thought black smoke in the fog would create some kind of marker. Chopper pilot uh, had mentioned uh, when we got rescued, you could see a glow in the fog and he slowed down there and sure enough, as soon as he slowed down, uh, we got within visual. That was definitely the scariest moment of my life, was floating away and not knowing what the outcome was gonna be. We're very much aware of the climate change and it's been for many years, even before climatologists were noticing the change, in it, we're already saying, Sila Alanoktok, our climate is changing. If the heat is going the way it is right now, for us, it's going to be pretty bad. Different birds are coming, and they're coming earlier, and sometimes rain is more than what we want, because when there's more rain, we know it's going to melt the permafrost. In my time as a young quail, when I was nine years old, we're hunting from ice that was about 25 feet thick. And there was giant icebergs already floating, coming by. That was the first signs of a changing climate. Ice that never broke before was now moving. Now, here it is 50 years later, we're hunting quail from ice that's 18 inches thick. There's no more thick ice. It's creating a malfunction in our whaling season, is, is what it is. Actually, more than that, all seasons in general. I think we are more scientists than more people will realize. We have more knowledge of those things than people will ever know. <laughs>